dreaded Orando Donax or giant reed or bamboo as I've been calling it because I can never remember that one. Giant reed, obviously I can remember that one, but to me it just looks like bamboo. I got a lot of comments on this at the end of the last video. I was reading through them all and everyone's saying the same thing. Yeah, a lot of you don't like it. Goes under foundations, it kills things around here. It spreads like wildfire. It's really difficult to dig up fires and uh, so on. But I really like it. Just so you know, we are about 100 meters from the back of the house. So I don't have to worry about foundations down here. And this stuff was here well before me. It is only in an area and it's the only place on my land that it grows about 30 feet from one end to the other end. And I took half of it up when I was putting the fencing around this area and it hasn't grown back. So I'm pretty happy with that. It is a nice divide between this side of the fence and that side of the fence. Little dry stream down there. We get water going through there maybe four weeks of the year. Uh, but I like the sound of it at night. I like the look of it and I don't really have a problem with it. On this side of the fence, there is still a little bit of it left over and I will be bringing a digger in to remove it all because I've got plans for this area down here. But I'm not going to go into that at this point because that's for when I'm back here full on and uh, I'll share it with you then. I did a little drone shot at the beginning of the video. My plan is wherever I am on this land when I'm back here, I will be doing that so you can get a better idea as to where I'm standing because it does go on to the top of the hill, this land. Um, and I think it's nice to know exactly where I am when I'm when I'm doing these videos because obviously I know where I am, but it can get a bit confusing to people. Uh, but as far as this stuff is concerned, it hasn't grown back. It doesn't appear to be spreading. And if I do get problems with it further down the line, I'll get a digger in. But I like it and I think I'm going to keep it here because that's why I did plant that last week. Though I have to say, I'm looking down at it. It's not doing very well. In fact, I think it's pretty close to dying. So some of you will be very happy with that, but it definitely isn't spreading. So don't worry. Eucalyptus, that also got some comments. Eucalyptus, I don't have any on my land, but there is a lot of people here who don't like it because of fires and so on. But as I always say, it's not eucalyptus trees or trees that start fires, it's humans. And I love the smell of eucalyptus, especially in the summertime. But these reeds, yeah, I like them. Those pesky plug sockets. So we've got quite a few of them going around this counter. You can never have too many. Cutting out around to make sure that it's going to be a nice seamless join is uh, quite fun. And this side is not too difficult because it's over two tiles so I can cut in from the side. You saw I was using the tracing paper there. It's a little bit of a trick I learned from back in the publishing days. I guess it's an animation trick. Um, just makes it kind of easy to mark on the tile where the hole is. And there is a little bit of leeway with the plastic cover that goes over the top of them. This side was a little bit more tricky because there's one hole with three sockets in there, but it's within one tile. So just cutting that out was a little bit fiddly. But now I've only got one more to go across here. Then I'm going to cut out a little bit of the trimming. The trimming and the tiles kind of need to go on the wall at the same time. So I'll just have to be patient and come back to this. But at least I know it all fits. Oh yeah, the reason I'm not actually sticking them to the wall just yet is because waiting for the extractor fan, which hasn't turned up just yet. I want to get that fixed in place because directly under it, the tiles will meet flush with the underside. And it's obviously going to be easier to get the measurements right if it's all fixed. So I'm back in Sombrage where I bought the van. A few minor issues. They're all sorting that out. Now, I get asked quite a few times through Messenger, 
want to buy in Portugal, the Algarve, where would you recommend? And of course, it all comes down to what you want, what your budget is, and whether you want to be in land or by the coast. There's a lot of variables in there. But I always point to Sombrage one way or another because it has all of the amenities that you need. 20 minutes or so from Faro Airport, similar distance to the beach, obviously depending which beach you go to. It's a nice location, it is up higher, but it's an easy road to get up here. And when you are here, it's got all of the shops that you will need. You've got the health side of it here with the uh, private health clinic, which is in the center. You've got the football pitches if you want to do a bit of sports. You've got the gyms, cafes, restaurants, bars, pretty much everything here. And of course, during the year, they have various festivals, which are pretty cool. Though, because of all that, it is getting a little bit more expensive. But I definitely couldn't afford to come back here. That's for sure. Not on my wages. Yeah, thinking about it and having just said that, I like it where I'm living. I think it's a great location, got access to everywhere, suits my sort of lifestyle. I'm starting to like tiles on the outside of the house, depending on the colour. Here's something I want to show you. See the stone? They come in all different designs, but that's the sort of thing that I want to do around in my house. Finishes it off really nicely. A lot of them are fake, but using real stone, I think adds quite a lot of character. So I do get asked a lot through Messenger again, what estate agents do I use? My previous three houses, my only previous three houses, I sold through Divine here. And they're right in the heart, the center of Sombraj. With regard to the future of selling houses, I don't know who I would use. It's who you kind of get on with, I guess. I like straight talking and I don't like the juggling words around and kind of convince you that things are worth what they're not and we'll do a great job we'll take amazing photographs i just want point blank this is what we think it's going to sell for this is who we can spread it out to the word as it were and uh, we'll give you some results and i put a time limit on it and it's worked up to now which is pretty cool No, the whole time I was living in Sombraj, I didn't even realize there was a public swimming pool. It would have been very handy from time to time on a really hot day when I couldn't be bothered to go down to the beach to just come down here for a swim. Yeah, it's the way it goes. And this building right in front of me is the camera, the council with its different departments. They got a nice location. And the thing I really liked about this in particular is that um, one, it's in the old town, it looks really nice, but it's very easy just to walk in and you can get things resolved fairly quickly. That looks really cool. Now, when I started liking tiles again, it was because of this color and I don't know whether you're seeing it as well as I am, but I think that that color mixed with slate and wood would look really nice in the bathroom. <laughs> well, I had to show you this very quickly because well, let me get outside. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, the public toilets. So while I was renovating uh, the other houses, I would, and I only found this out a bit further down the line, but I only had hose pipe. Most of the time I've just been living in tents or in a house with no roof on in filthy conditions. And I had a hose pipe showering, which in the winter time isn't so much fun, freezing cold, especially as I always ended up doing it in the evening. Uh, but here, hot water. So I would often come down here, order my takeaway and have a shower. I'm gonna head back now, see if the uh, van is ready because I'm starting to overheat a lot. Wowza. Ooh. So, coming back to the kitchen next week. In the meantime, I have painted this room now under the steps that go up onto the balcony and that's really freshened it up, which is good. And I guess as I'm waiting now for next week, the next obvious thing to do You know, having a door open now, not just going through the side door, this room is actually a quite a good size, I think. I need to get the walls and the floor painted and sorted out, give it a new fresh lease of life. But we have got loads of old junk in here that we need to remove. We do still need to go up into the top bit there and fix in a new roof. But we'll come back to that. First job I've got to do is empty all of this out as much as possible and put it somewhere. And we do have a door now to go into that area under the steps and we'll match it to the garage door. Ugh, old paint pots to collect all the crap that's on the floor. Oh man. So the temperature now has gone up to 40. And really, unless you're at the beach or chilling out, it's very difficult to do anything even. I've just nipped home. I've only been doing this for an hour, and I had to nip home, get some supplements in me, get all the right stuff to perk me up a little bit. And uh, I think I've probably got a window of about an hour before I drain back down again. But it is quite incredible. It doesn't matter how keen you are, it doesn't matter how much you just wanna get these things done. As soon as that temperature comes in, yeah, it, uh, it just, you can feel your body drain and sink, but it's not going to stop us. The one thing that's really on top of my mind is when we finish here is to get started in my house and I'm going to be on the roof. <laughs> this really is the worst time of year to be doing this, but uh, it'll be a bit different when I'm at my house because I've obviously got everything around me and I can stop and start and run into shaded areas and so on. And yeah, there's no getting away from it at this point, but as soon as we get it done, the sooner we can move forward. Oh. oh, right. Hmm. Looking a bit neglected out here, isn't it? Not for long though. It's gonna look fantastic. Well, we've got the bulk of it out. Pool table 
slate here is incredibly heavy, really heavy. But it is nice to be able to walk around the inside of this and the room definitely feels so much bigger. Yeah, a bit of sweeping up and then we can start. Uh, yeah, the wall doesn't look like it's in too great condition, but to be honest with you, a little bit of that. Fresh lick of paint in here, it will look as good as new. Yeah, so unfortunately I've been scraping the paint off and a bit more's coming off than I was uh, hoping for. I guessed it was probably going to do that and give them a fresh, clean, new plaster. So I'm not going to think about it. I'm just going to clear out as much as I can, scrape off everything. And tomorrow morning I'm going to come back, mix up what I need and see if I can get this room done. So next week I can come back and paint it. So you'll see up in the hills around where I am, that there are a lot of areas with slate. What I'm calling slate anyway. It's not like the slate you used to see on the old churches back in Blighty, but this is definitely some form of slate. It's very brittle. And as you can see on here, if I pan out, you'll see on here how it just comes away. And if I just press harder on there, yeah, it is quite brittle. So it will go thinner and thinner and thinner. And then you're left with a slither, which I thought would be quite nice as a tile, possibly in the in the uh, bathroom, not the kitchen. And I think that if I can find enough of this that's suitable, that's actually a really nice idea because it's got some beautiful colours in it. And I'll see if I can show you. Uh, that moment I'm looking, it's got this sort of rust colours in this section that I'm in. You see one side is red and the other side is... Uh, let's take that one because that's quite interesting. I'm in the worst possible light, so I'll take it up into the sun in a second. But if I just drop it in the water... Got these lovely rich colours. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that because there's a lot of it here. This isn't on my plot, but uh, it's a nice little area to just grab a few pieces and test it. Let's have a look and see what this looks like in the sun. Yeah, I like that. They're all slightly different colours. I think the contrast is really nice. The nice little ritual, watering all the fruit trees. Well, it's a good workout without realising. Oh, the temperatures in this house are absolutely spot on. It's beautiful. Testament to these old stone houses. I love them. Mine's a stone house. Really looking forward to getting on with that. If you can get the insulation sorted out and heating during the winter, I think stone houses are perfect. And it feels so nice to be in here because it's 40 degrees outside. No matter what I say about the weather, about it being hot and so on, I'm working in it. I'm not moaning about it. I love it. It's just very difficult because I'm in a bus that overheats at seven o'clock in the morning. My body's already hot. I've walked the dogs and I come here and there's no shelter when you're outside. Um, but I love this weather and I can't wait to get down to the beach. Now in here though, this perfect temperature has cooled me down enough and in the garage there's a little breeze coming through so I'm looking forward to getting on with that. We're so close right now. 
Um, I have had people telling me that I should get a um, sunshade over the top of the bus or paint it white, but I've done as much as I need to do to that bus. And when it's repurposed, I'll be dealing with that then. I'm not in it during the day, so I don't have to worry too much. But my concern is to get all this lot sorted out. So I'm gonna see how far I get with this one wall, first of all today, and hopefully next week we'll get this garage completely finished waiting for the extractor fan, of course, and that's gonna be coming next week, later in the week, I think, and then we'll get that uh, kitchen area sorted out. James is very close to finishing the bathroom, and then that'll leave the snagging, getting some doors on, putting the kickboards or the skirting boards around, and then we can get into the courtyard. So at least we're getting forward on this one and we're getting very close. But well, I think tomorrow, despite what I said last week, the beach is calling me. So I think this is good incentive to get this sorted out. Right, I've got this prepared now. I think I've done as much as I need to. So let's see what this looks like in a minute or so, maybe. I managed to do two walls in the end, so I'm very pleased about that. This one's starting to dry off nicely. All the patches are starting to disappear. It is flat, and I think that'll be ready for painting next week. I just got this one wall to do, and I'll come back on Monday to do that. But because I stayed here a little bit longer and did that back wall, making my life easier on Monday, I think that definitely deserves a trip to the beach. So that's what I'm gonna be doing tomorrow after a few chores. While I was doing that though, I remembered something I completely forgot and it's gonna be very handy right now. So I'm gonna dash back and sort that out now. See you next week.